Okay, so we left off um, talking about the greenhouse effect, um, which is a description of how the atmosphere keeps the earth warm and uh, stable as far as temperature goes. And here are just some written notes that we need to um, we need to add. So some of the greenhouse gases or atmospheric gases that create that effect are carbon dioxide, methane, and water. Greenhouse gases in the atmosphere allow the sun or the solar radiation to enter the biosphere. Um, but slow down the loss of the re-radiated heat to space. And I'm going to show you a diagram here um, that goes with these notes in a little bit. Okay, so let's take a look here. Okay, so here's, here's the, this is a really nice diagram because it's super simple, but what the notes were saying on the last slide is that the atmosphere here, that kind of clear layer there, those are those are atmospheric gases or greenhouse gases. These are the gases that are going to trap the sun's energy. See how the sun's energy is coming down to Earth? Okay. The greenhouse gases or atmospheric gases will trap most of that energy, and that's going to keep the Earth fairly warm and cozy. A little bit of that energy is going to bounce off and 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 go right back into into space but that's not that's not a lot of it most of it we're gonna we're gonna keep and and stay warm okay so here are the here are the blanks that go with this little diagram here so here this is just saying that most of the sun's heat is absorbed um, by the earth some of it is reflected as light and some of it bounces back off of the earth and back into space as heat or re-radiated. And then, of course, a lot of the, the heat is, is retained. Okay, this is a really nice, simple diagram for that. Okay, so, so that's, that's one way that, um, that the greenhouse effect or, or the atmosphere uh, contribute to the climate on earth or the different climates, I should say, okay? The other factor that contributes to climate is latitude, and this is this is actually a huge factor, okay? And we talked earlier about how um, the equator is always going to be a lot warmer than the North Pole or the South Pole, okay? This here is exactly why. If you'll notice, first I want to point out that this drawing is not to scale. The Earth is, compared to the Sun, the Earth would be way, way smaller, and we would not be this close to the Sun. Okay, so again, I want to stress that the scale of this drawing is not correct, but it, it illustrates the idea very, very well. So if you take a look, here's the Earth, right? And you can clearly see that the equator here is a lot close, the distance is a lot closer to the sun than the poles here and here, right? So just the distance alone makes a big difference in how hot or cold it's going to be, right? But what you also can see is that at the equator, the sun is hitting like directly, it's beaming right on there, right? And then at the poles, the sun is hitting at a lower angle, right? And that's actually going to make a difference um, on how intense the, the, the sun's heat is when, when, it, when it strikes the earth like that, okay? So again, this is, this is why um, latitude, in other words, your position going up and down or north and south affect climate so much, okay? So overall uh, places in the North or South Pole, or you could say the Arctic or the Antarctic, tend to be much colder, and then places near the equator tend to be much warmer, okay? But do remember that it's more complicated than that, like we talked about in class, okay? All right, so here are some written notes for the latitude factor. The distance of any point on the surface of the Earth, so any distance here on Earth, north or south from the equator is latitude. So again, 
some of you thought that longitude was going north and south, it is the latitude, all right? So latitude is your position going up and down or north and south. Um, you need to know that for your test, okay? Light from the sun strikes the earth more directly at the equator. I mean, you can see the, the sun rays just directly beaming on there. Okay, so light from the sun strikes on uh, strikes the earth more directly at the equator than at the poles here. And you can see how the light's hitting at lower angles here at the poles. So that, again, that makes a big difference. Okay, so those are the written notes for, for latitude. Okay, then another factor that we talked about that affects uh, climate on earth or the different climates, I should say, were, um, were wind currents, okay? And this, um, this link here, it's wind currents and weather patterns. It's a video, short video by NASA. It's absolutely beautiful. The graphics are wonderful. I'm going to post this link on Canvas so that you can watch that on your own time. I, I do highly encourage you to watch it um, because, again, the graphics are just absolutely beautiful, okay? All right, and then again, uh, ocean, ocean currents are going to be very similar to wind currents, okay? Um, <clears throat> overall, um, warm air tends to rise up, and cold air always tends to sink, okay? So if you remember, the hottest places on Earth are going to be right here at the equator, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. So this is where the air is going to be heated very, very well, okay? And this air, this hot air, is going to tend to rise up, okay? The air up here at the North Pole and the South Pole is going to be very cold. So that cold air tends to sink down. Well, when you have warm air rising and cold air sinking, it's going to cause wind it's going to cause that that's that's exactly how we get wind right and so the arrows um represent um the temperature of the air and then also which way um the the air or the wind tends to move on earth and, and this is just a very very general pattern of movement for wind but it gives you a rough idea as to how how wind wind patterns work okay all right, and then the the cold and hot temperature, um, we we say that that's unequal distribution of heat, unequal distribution of heat between the equator and the poles, and that's what creates your wind. All right, um, again, similar to the ocean current, warm ocean water tends to rise, cold ocean water tends to sink. And when you have warm water rising and cold water sinking, that movement is going to create ocean currents. All right, so let's go on to the next one. Okay, so again, the red arrows uh, represent the warm air and the blue arrows represent the cold air. And this little key here is very helpful. All right, so Earth has winds because, so now we're just going to put this in writing. Earth has winds because warm air rises and cold air sinks. Air that is heated near the equator is going to rise and expand, and it's going to spread north and south naturally, okay? And then as it cools, it's going to start to cool, well, it's it's going to sink as it cools, okay? In the cold polar regions, the air is going to be cold because it's cold up there, right? That cold air is going to sink towards Earth's surface, and it's going to push air at the, sur at the surface out, okay? So again, when you have warm, this air rising and sinking, that's going to give us our wind currents, all right? And so as this cold air gets pushed out to the surface and, and it starts kind of moving its way towards the equator, then it's going to start to warm up and it'll, it'll rise eventually. So it's, it's almost, it's like a cycle. It's a cycle. 
okay? The upward and downward movement of the air create wind, okay? And again, this is, this is another, um, sorry, another animation um, that explains ocean currents. I will also add this link on Canvas as well. I highly, highly encourage you to watch to watch um, this animation as well because again, graphics are absolutely beautiful on this one too. Okay, so let's take a pic. Let's take a look at a at a picture. So here's here's uh, a diagram of ocean currents on Earth. Right. Okay. Remember uh, the red arrows uh, signify the warm water. Uh, the dark blue arrows signify the cold water and then the light blue fat arrows signify the deeper ocean currents but we we just want a basic idea of of how the movement works okay so if you take a look this is the equator right here right this water since since it's since we're so close to the equator here this water is going to be um heated up easily by the sun okay and this hot water or warm water is going to start rising. It rises towards the poles. All right. This is why you see, you know, these arrows over here. I I know it 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 sounds a little counterintuitive, but this is this warm water here. It's rising towards the poles. Okay. For example, the people here that live here, it doesn't feel like they're upside down. They kind of are upside down, okay? And then here, the water at the equator here, a little bit further north, this warm water is going to rise up as well, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to tend to move north, okay? So you, you can see this water here, it's trying to move north, and then this, uh, this continent gets right in the way, but it's, it's trying to move up, okay? The cold waters over here at the poles, the South Pole and the North Pole, those cold waters are going to tend to sink down. So when these cold water, uh, these cold waters sink down, they're actually going to sink down towards the equator. All right, and you could see them; they're kind of moving towards the equator here. Right, they're kind of moving towards the equator. If you take a look up here, this cold water is trying to move down towards the equator here. This is trying to move down towards the equator as well. Okay. This one was trying to move down towards the equator, but it kind of got shoved up because of the other currents here, okay? But again, that cold water is trying to sink, all right? And this is what creates our ocean currents. Make sure that if you have any questions that you write them down so you remember to, uh, to ask, okay? Now, the really cool, weird example that I was talking about um, earlier are the British Isles. Okay, so this has more to do with latitude and ocean currents. Okay, so the British Isles uh, tend to be pretty warm during certain parts of the year. All righty, it's, it's actually kind of, kind of nice weather. Okay, and the reason is because even though they're super high up north towards the pole and they should be freezing cold, what happens is this warm ocean water that's, that's you know, moving up from the equator, this warm ocean water um, is warm enough that it's going to warm the local air here and that's going to contribute to making this climate actually kind of nice. Okay, so again, this is just an example of how there's so many different factors that go into climate. Okay, all right. Um, I think for the British Isles, uh, I think that's about all I have for uh, for the British Isles. Okay, so let me go on here. So let's put some of this into writing. So surface water surface water so that means just the water at the at, at the top right of the ocean it too is also going to move because wind is going to push it so not only is ocean water moving because it's it's hot and cold and it's rising and sinking but um the wind will also push uh the water that's that's uh present at at the surface okay 
um, ocean currents transfer enormous amounts of heat. Again, this is why the British Isles actually have really decent weather during certain times of year. Okay, warm surface currents, in other words, warm top water is going to add moisture to the air and it's also going to add heat to the air. And again, this is why like if you go down to the beach um, on the East Coast, this is why partly why the, the air is so humid and your hair tends to get frizzy because that warm ocean water is literally, it's, it's evaporating. It's evaporating and so it's making the air moist. Okay, and it's also making the air warm, by the way. Okay, cool or colder surface currents um, or cool surface currents, cool air as it passes over them. Okay, so cold water, cold ocean water is going to make the, the air that passes over it cold. So cold ocean water does create cold air. All right. Nearby land masses are affected by these currents as well, too. All righty, and I showed you in, in the map earlier how, how um, some of the continents were blocking, were blocking the ocean currents and stuff. Well, not only are the continents blocking the ocean currents, but those ocean currents will also affect the climate um, of, those, of those land masses or continents as well. Okay, Upwelling. This is just a fancy vocabulary word. Um, it means it, it's it's when it refers to when cold water near the poles sinks and flows along the ocean floor until it starts reaching the warmer regions near the equator, and then as that water reaches the equator and starts warming up, it's going to rise again. So again, we we already talked about this. This is just a fancy vocab word that goes with that idea. Okay, and then here's just a quick teeny tiny little review. Okay, so um, blank trap heat in the biosphere. Blank trap heat in the biosphere. What do you think that is? And then the next one is some of the energy that enters Earth's atmosphere is re-radiated. In other words, it bounces back off as blank. All right, so let's take a look at the answer here. Greenhouse gases trap heat in the biosphere. Some of the energy that enters Earth's atmosphere is re-radiated as heat. Okay. All right. And then that is it. Again, please make sure. I hope that you added um, extra notes to, to, you know, to your fill-ins. Um, I hope that you really try to think of some questions that you might have for me. Um, and then that's, that's about it. Thanks. Sorry it took kind of a long time.